Okay, in this video we want to focus on interpreting a fully resolved carbon-13 spectrum. That's one in which we allow the protons to couple with the carbons and we see all of the splitting patterns. These are incredibly complicated uh, and so a lot of times there'll be overlapping peaks, difficult to interpret, but in the cases that we'll look at uh, today, uh, we'll be able to, to separate everything and be able to interpret it. The reason that we don't do this normally is because of the complexity. First thing you need to know is a rule of thumb. Um, this rule of thumb only applies to aromatic carbons, which is the example that we're going to be looking at. In that case, um, carbons in a ring, that's like in a benzene ring, will couple with the hydrogens such that the uh, J coupling, the magnitude of it, will be greatest if the hydrogen is attached. So the so-called one bond J coupling is the greatest term. Then secondary to that, a smaller splitting uh, value would be for the three bond J coupling. And then finally, the two bond J coupling, even though that hydrogen is closer uh, in terms of distance, the two bond J coupling is the smallest and sometimes not even observed. In other words, if it's on the order of a Hertz, uh, an instrument like the one we have wouldn't be able to see it. So a uh, strong coupling to the hydrogen that's attached and then uh, secondary coupling to hydrogens that are three bonds away. And then you can pretty much ignore the two bond uh, coupling uh, at most, it would appear as a fork in the peak and not very well separated on a 300 megahertz instrument, at least. Here's the structure of an example that we can look at. It's ethyl benzene. So we have a benzene ring with the uh, ethyl group at the one position here. Um, we're not going to look at focus on the, the carbons of the alkane uh, side chain, we want to focus on interpreting the carbons of the ring. And there would be um, signals coming from carbon 1. 2 and 6 are equivalent, 3 and 5 are equivalent, and 4 is unique. So there will be uh, 4 signals coming from the ring altogether. Now, to explain more about this uh, coupling pattern, uh, order of magnitude here, Consider the carbon that's labeled carbon-3. It will be split um, by the hydrogen that's attached, so that'll make it a doublet. And then the next order of magnitude splitting would be due to the red hydrogen at position 5, because you see that would be the three-bond coupling to that carbon, right? One, two three. So that's three bonds away, that hydrogen. If you go in the other direction, three bonds, one, two, you can't go any further there, or one, two, three, or three, you don't get to any hydrogens, right? So the only three bond coupling to a hydrogen would be the hydrogen that we see right here listed as being attached to carbon five. That will split the doublet additionally. And so this signal, the one that is due to this carbon, split by the hydrogen attached and split by the hydrogen at C5, that should be a doublet of doublets. In other words, the, f the primary splitting is a doublet but then each of those prongs of the doublet will be split into doublets. So you'll have a doublet of doublets. If you further examine uh, some of the other carbons, um, you'll be able to see that, let's look at the carbon labeled uh, C4. C4 has uh, a hydrogen that is three bonds away and another hydrogen that's three bonds away. So in addition to the primary splitting, it will be split 
by two other hydrogens that are three bonds away. So initially it's a doublet, but then it becomes doublet of triplets because it's going to be split again by these hydrogens. So this is how we're going to be able to distinguish between these two carbons. Um, let's look at the final one here, this carbon two. Uh, what about the three bond coupling there? Well, the green hydrogens will split that. And so again, you'll have this pattern of an initial doublet, but then it'll be split uh, so that you have a doublet of triplets. So let's look at the carbon spectrum of ethylbenzene, and we'll look at the J resolved spectrum as well, and we'll see if we can't find these things. So uh, what's on the what I'm showing now is the uh, ethylbenzene normal carbon 13 spectrum, the CPD spectrum, and this would have just a single peak for each carbon. So we see down around 20 parts per million we see the two carbons of the side chain. Let's ignore those. We're not interested in studying those. The peak that's just shy of 80 is uh, salt due to the solvent. It's a characteristic uh, triplet from uh, chloroform. And then in this region, from 120 to, let's say, 145, is where we find the aromatic carbons, the carbons of the ring. The little peak on the end here uh, at around 150, or 145, is uh, due to the carbon that has the ethyl group. So we'll ignore that. And now we'll focus just on these uh, peaks that are close together here. There's three of them. And uh, let's, let's just zoom in on, on that section. Here's the zoomed in spectrum. We see three peaks. These would be due to the uh, carbons at positions two, three, and four. Uh, two and six are the same, three and five are the same. So they would be due to two, three, and four. Which one is which? That's the question we're going to try to answer. So as we're looking at it right now, this is the, the normal CPD spectrum, uh, the single peak for each carbon. If we want to look at how they get split up, I'm going to advance to the next frame, and you're going you're to see for each of these peaks, things get broken apart. So we've got a peak here, a peak here, and a peak at 126. Now take a look at this. I'm going to advance the slide, and see the J resolved on top. Okay, now you see the going working from left to right. Initially there was a peak sort of in uh, this area right here. There was initially a peak and then there was another peak here and then a final peak here. This first one here is now split into a set of doublets, a doublet of doublets, if you will, that first peak that we saw. This peak that had been initially here is now split into um, a set of, it's actually a quartet on this side, Quintet, actually, one, two, three, four, five, quintet on this side. And then the initial peak that's here is split into a triplet and a triplet. Notice that this region here has got an overlap between the triplet coming from the right and the quintet coming from the left. And so that's why it looks the way it does. But... Um, Let's go back and I'll do this one more time. Here's the original. 
Here's the J result. Original J result. And let's review again how this relates to the structure. So the doublet of doublets is due to the carbon labeled two, or sorry, that was the three, labeled three. Uh, that's because there would be the splitting and then split again by the hydrogen at five. The carbon labeled at two would be split by uh, the hydrogen at six and four, but also it would be split, and I missed this last time, and maybe someone caught me on this, but it would also be split by the hydrogens of the first carbon in the ethyl group, because that also is uh, three bonds away. So that's why, in fact, the carbon at two was the second from the left in the original, because it's now split into a quintet, a doublet of quintets. Finally, carbon four is uh, the doublet of triplets, as I described uh, earlier. So we're able to identify and assign the original peaks um, according to that. So working from left to right, it would be three, doublet of doublets, uh, let's see, two, doublet of quintets, and four, the doublet of triplets. Three, two, four is the way it goes. And so in the original, we can say that's carbon three, that's carbon two, and that's carbon four. Without doing the J resolved, showing the hydrogen splitting of the carbons, it would be difficult to assign these carbons by any other means.